my understanding from uh, talking to uh, Richard who's over here and Bobby Showers, our, our manager, uh, that it was a very cooperative and collaborative effort on this audit and that this is a city that's really committed to making itself fiscally uh, as, as uh, responsible as it is beautiful here in this area of the state. So congratulations on that. A lot of times I go into a city and either I'm required to do an audit by law or a small group of people in town want to make do an audit and a lot of other people are mad about it. You know, so there's these politics that go on. From what I understand, that's not the case here. Everybody's committed to improving the community, uh, and, uh, and so it's really a pleasure to be here under circumstances where we can all work together. I also have Vanessa Chandler, our director of communications, back here in case there's any, any local reporters or media that want anything we're not going to talk to them as well. Uh, <laughs>
So in our audit, you'll see several examples of where the rates were not properly applied, uh, the amounts were not properly charged, or some people weren't required to pay. Uh, we also found that the city does not adequately track the <coughs> sewer and water service collections. Some collections were deposited into the general fund, and some water and sewer expenses were paid in the general fund. There's a law in Missouri, it's section 25150, which you can look up, which restricts water and sewer monies to be used for operating systems, payment of all bonds, etc. There's not a lot of equal mingling with the water and sewer money with the general revenue money, and that happened on a few occasions in this case. Um, we also found some problems with uh, reviewing the water and, utility and sewer costs to support the rates charged. Charges should be based on actual costs, and that was not occurring, at least until recently. Uh, and then water and sewer fees should cover the cost of providing the services, and we think that more of a review should occur there. There were some issues with the water and uh, sewer delinquent accounts. Uh, Delinquent accounts are not, at the time of the audit, are not being administered in accordance with, with your own city ordinances. So, for example, you have city ordinance 110 100. It says there should be a shut off if you're 10 days late and there was no discussion of a fee. At that time, the city policy was a 5% late fee and shut off at the end of the next month. So, you had a situation where the ordinance and the practice were not actually consistent. And that, we understand, is also going to be a remedy. Other issues. Uh, the delinquent account balance increased from $6,245 in June 2010 to $10,593 in February 2012. Obviously, that's going in the wrong direction. Delinquencies were increasing at that point. We found that 17% of the accounts were delinquent, with an average of $500 in delinquency for each delinquent account. And you know, that's money that the taxpayers pay that, are, that, are, that, are, that should be paid into the city if they're receiving the services. We found situations where accounts delinquent for months were not disconnected, delinquency notices were not sent, and late penalties were not assessed, including one person who had a late, a late penalty assessed of up to $1,077. That was not uh, collected. The person left town, and the money was never collected. Um, we, think, we think that the solution is, of course, to follow the ordinances and make sure that street tax in that case. There's also an issue with significant water losses. Uh, the last water commissioner not prepared a water reconciliation since July 2011. Uh, predecessor had prepared water reconciliations, and we found, for example, for the year ending June 30, 2011, the total gallons of water not filled was 27% of the water purchase. Now, in our experience, there's always going to be water loss. There's leakage, sometimes people take water they're not supposed to, but what we normally find for audit purposes is that 10% water loss is the proper amount, and we'd like to know water loss, but 10% is within the realm of acceptability, 27% is way too high. So we thought that was uh, probably due to pipe leaks and system deterioration. And there were also, I understand, a couple of incidences, specific incidents that happened there where there was water loss. There was a faulty meter gauge in one case. And there was a truck delivering a dumpster and damaged the water meter and caused 10,000 acre down to be lost. So there were individual explanations for some of the water loss that occurred here. But we feel that the city should take action to improve that water loss and improve the situation of the water loss. We have a finding in the audit also about meter deposits. Procedures to track meter deposits were not accurate. Uh, generally, a new sewer customer or water customer pays $100 deposit, uh, which is deposited in a separate bank account. Uh, our audit said that as of February 2012, it had $3,790 in meter deposits. The bank account had $4,500. There was no explanation of the discrepancy. Now, I guess it's always better to have more money than you're supposed to than less, but we always like to see as accountants and lawyers, those numbers can be exactly right. So again, reconciliation is an important part. Now, our recommendations regarding the water and sewer are simple, and they flow from the obvious findings of the audit. Uh, one, segregate the water, water commissioner's duties to the extent possible or perform an independent review. Now, we know we're in a small town, we can't hire five people to do this, but at least make sure there's some sort of uh, uh, review process so that one person is responsible for all aspects of the water process. Ensure the board approves all system adjustments, requires supporting documentation, uh, and, and but there's a trail paper trail so we can follow exactly what <coughs> uh, And my understanding is that uh, you all implemented that, and that's already a process. So we're very, very pleased to see that what we found has resulted in immediate action. We ask that you separately track all receipts and disbursements for water and sewer. My understanding is you're in the process of implementing that right now, so that's good. Hopefully that will be uh, completed. Periodically review utility rates to ensure receipts are sufficient to cover all the costs of providing services. You want to make sure your rates cover the services so you're not in a deficit situation. My understanding is that that will be implemented very shortly. Uh, and the water costs actually from your supplier went up 17% recently, so there is going to be a required increase. And it's unfortunate, you know, this is especially in this economy, but it's important that the city remain solvent and you've got to make sure that you're 
buildings that people need to see. Uh, handle delinquent accounts in accordance with the ordinances. As I mentioned early, earlier, there's a, uh, an ordinance on how those are being handled, and that ordinance was not followed. My understanding that that is being implemented, and that the city is collecting over $3,000 in delinquent bills. And that's good news. We're glad to hear that. Uh, reconcile water purchase to water bill monthly. Uh, and I understand that's being implemented also, so we're very pleased with that. And of course, it's important to maintain adequate records of all this so people can come and look, and people in the city can be confident that everything's being followed the way it should be. So that was our, that was our, probably our biggest finding. There were a lot of issues with water, and I can tell you all that, you all know that. And, uh, and, we, and we're, we're very comfortable with the responses we receive uh, and that these problems are being done. Our second finding related to accounting controls and procedures. Uh, accounting duties are not adequately segregated. And we found that the board, at least previously, had not adequately reviewed the work performed by the treasurer. Treasurer's duty, as you know, is performing bank reconciliations, reporting receipts, disbursements, preparing distributing checks, and preparing monthly financial reports. Proper segregation duties make sure that everything is, is safeguarded and there's no opportunity for stealing money or anything like that. We did not find any stolen money. And by the way, since I've been auditor for the past uh, 18 months, we found a lot of communities where people are stealing money. And nothing like that happened. So that's you can be happy about that. We found in one county in northern Missouri somebody had stolen over five hundred thousand dollars. So, so that the, the, the reason why you need segregation of duties, why you need to make sure that either you have more than one person, the same person bringing in the money to the one depositing money, the same one depositing money to the one reviewing the bank statement, is to make sure that every now and then you get a bad day. You want to make sure that that person can be caught, and that's why you need that kind of a review. And so we're hoping that would occur here. The good news is we didn't find anything like that, and I want to be very clear about that. Uh, but the bad news is, I've been around the state a lot now, and I see it all the time. And the way you avoid it is by having proper segregation of accounting duties, and we hope that you can do that. Uh, monthly bank reconciliations were not performed. Now, when you all write a check, you balance your own check, but when the bank statement comes in, you look and make sure that all that, that's the same, too. And that, was, that equivalent was not going on here, and so we hope that will occur as well. Uh, there were some problems with restricted funds. Uh, we have to make sure that funds are deposited in the way that state law requires them to be deposited. So for example, in fiscal year 2011, the city deposited $1,167 in state motor vehicle fund receipts, but it deposited them in the general fund. Uh, and those are supposed to be segregated and kept only for motor vehicle or street related purposes. So we can read, we can read in, the, uh, in the audit report that there were several examples <coughs> where there was a co-mingling of restricted funds or they were applied to the wrong place. And it got to be properly separated it's a matter of state law here. Now, it's not a criminal problem, it's just a matter of following proper procedures under state law. And we've got several examples where restricted funds are not properly accounted for. So our recommendation relative to accounting duties, again, our recommendations are all always for the multi uh, Segregated duties receiving, reporting, depositing, and dispersing money, or at the minimum, perform a documented review of those files. Uh, and my understanding is there's a full commitment on the part of the management of the city to do that. So we're very pleased about that. Reconcile bank records to city accounting records on a monthly basis. That's what we normally ask people to do. That's standard solid accounting practices. And we're understanding that is also the process of making implemented. And of course, ensure restricted receipts such as property taxes, interest, and motor vehicle related taxes are credited to the proper city fund and kept segregated. <coughs> and again, uh, we can receive complete cooperation. We understand those processes are going to be implemented and the accounting will be proper going forward. Let's talk a little bit about audits, budgets, and financial reporting. Unfortunately, in every state, there has to be a little bit of a bureaucracy and some reporting requirements that you have to report to the state to make sure it can handle correctly with respect to taxpayer dollars. Uh, audits. The city does not obtain annual audits of its water and sewer systems, but that's actually required by Missouri law, uh, and uh, also by the city's loan agreements with the Department of Agriculture. So we're asking those to occur. Budget. State law requires every city request, uh, prepare a budget, and there are requirements about what the budget has to have, beginning balance, balance, estimated expenses, and the like, and we found, that at least during the period we audited, uh, those were not being done. And if you look at section 67.010 of the Missouri statutes, it states very specifically exactly what has to be in those budgets and how you can make it comply with the law. Financial statements. The state law requires that every city publish so that everybody can view financial statements, and the city had not been publishing its financial statements. In fact, there's a state law that says you can't actually even spend any money unless you publish your financial statements. Financial reporting. There are annual financial reports that have to be reported to my office actually every year uh, under Missouri law. Those are also, all the laws are cited in the, in the report. Uh, and that has to be filed uh, 
on the, within four months of the end of the fiscal year, if the city files an unaudited, uh, uh, if, if the city files, and it has to be within six months after this, at the end of the fiscal year, if the city files an audit report prepared by a CPA. So there are specific requirements for reporting to my office, uh, your audit statements, and that will be done. So our recommendation again is please obtain audits of the combined water and sewer system required by state law and your loan agreements with the Department of Agriculture. Uh, which is being implemented. Ensure budgets are prepared to contain all information required by state law, which is set out very specifically in state law. We understand that's in process of occurring. Uh, and submit uh, your semi -annual, annual financial statements and your financial reports to my office as required by state law. You know, it's paperwork, but it's required paperwork. And I think ultimately it's good because then we get a look at things too, and we can always take a look and make sure things are looking good uh, from a distance. Uh, and we hope you'll do that going forward. In fact, it's legally required. Uh, our fourth finding related to street work. Uh, the city does not have a formal bidding policy and did not bid, for example, for street repair services in fiscal year 2011, there was about $18,000 worth. We are big believers in the free market and competition in the auditor's office. You get the best price when you have competition, and we think there ought to be competition, and it's uh, 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 required to be done in some places. Written contracts are actually required all over Missouri. Uh, and we found that some of the contracts that the city let out were oral contracts, handshakes. And you know, I like coming to places where people say, hey, in my part of the state, a handshake's as good as the word. Uh, and that's a great idea, and 99% of the time people do it. But the 1% that you don't have a contract, something's going to take you for a lot of money. Uh, and I've been around and I've seen it all over the state where people back off on their agreements and there's no written contract. So it really is important for any contract you're going to see that they can get it in writing and have it be legally binding so that it's enforceable in case somebody doesn't do what they promise. You can handle your own personal private bits however you want. I, as I said, I kind of like places where handshake is good enough and kind of where I come from, it's like that too. But when it comes to something that involves taxpayer dollars being spent, you really do need to put it in writing, and that's actually required uh, by state law, uh, section 432. So our recommendation uh, flowing from our audit uh, was to establish formal bidding procedures, including documentation requirements for bids and quotes, and to enter in written contracts. And again, there's been a complete commitment on the part of the city to do that. And we think that will result in better processes. So that's kind of a summary of what we found. There are other findings in the audit. I've got my audit director and the person that conducted the audit right here with me if you have any questions. But I thought it was important to come here and talk to you personally and tell you how appreciative we were that you called us in to do it. We hope you're happy with the product. Uh, we are very pleased and, and really do believe the city is committed to implementing these recommendations. Uh, and, uh, and you have a lovely place. And I'm looking forward to looking around after we're done here today. Thank you very much. Cities have now implemented recommendations and just how much 
less stress there is among city government, among the citizens about their city government. It really goes down and it comes back to where you can worry about the other things in your life and all the other things going on in the state and the country and not worry about whether there's anything well run. It really does change the city when people implement those recommendations. And, uh, and I think you'll be happy with the results you see. One, one more quick comment. Most of us believe in local government. The closer we are to home, the better. I mean, we believe in that philosophically. We just got to make it tangibly right. That means that we have to be responsible. So and one thing about my right. office is I never want to come in and run the city. I just want to give them ideas on how they can run their city better, and hope they implement those. And then we come back, we usually do a follow-up to see how things are looking. And, uh, and I've been just, there were no follow-up audits until I became longer. And I kind of thought people might not like the idea of a follow-up audit, or they're coming back. But people are proud of, what, of the accomplishments they made. And we found people been excited about us coming back to show their things to put into place. And we will do that in about uh, six months. A very brief visit just to make sure that the recommendations are put in place. And my experience has been that, uh, uh, that these follow up audits are very positive because people really do implement the recommendations and, and we come back to communities that are much better than when we left. So thanks again. I'm happy to be here. I'm going to take a look around. Yeah, question. Well, speaking of uh, the follow ups, yeah. there are several things that we've already implemented. Mm -hmm. And that's in the oddities response in each section. Right. So we want to make sure that people at least read that oddities response. Yeah, and that's why we were so impressed because we rarely do an audit where by the time we get there, we deliver the audit, almost everything has been implemented. And that's very, very good. Uh, and so I'm very optimistic the six month review is going to be very successful because almost everything's been implemented already. There's just a few odds and ends to clear up. So it'll be a very brief visit, I hope, when we come back. Okay. Yes. Oh, uh, on, on the first page, uh, the blue page. Yeah. Uh, right at the bottom, mm -hmm. uh, where it says core. Could you clarify, because it sounds like, if, if you don't clarify it, it sounds heavy. Uh, the last sentence, the report contains numerous findings that require management's immediate attention and or the entity has indicated most recommendations will not be implemented. Right. Is that a, a general statement? In, in, that, that in is, all, all reports that, or something? All like reports, right? That's how, in this case, there was no, there was no indication they won't be implemented. There were just right. a lot of findings. So so that's that's what I wanted to but I think it's very important for the members of the media here to understand that this is a rating we have to get based on the number of findings. We were very pleased with the cooperation and the commitment to improve the, problem, the problems. And in fact, most of the problems have already been remedied. And, and uh, we don't usually find that. It's a, it's a very impressive community. People who are really working together to fix problems are very impressive. Okay. Thank you. All right. Thanks. Yeah. Is there any reason why? Um, on our water bills, why the clerk cannot take that money, make a listing, post it to that person's account, and then give the money to the treasurer? Uh, it, it, I mean, it, that would probably be acceptable. And I'll, I'll defer to Bobby. You think that would be acceptable to do that? I mean, they, they can't afford to hire two people, is what you're saying. It's, it's, it's a small, small town. town. Yeah, it's a small town. So how do you keep do, do you segregate when the town is so small? And I think as long as there's a review, by the mayor, by, you know, by, by the community, there's some sort of review by somebody else at some point. It doesn't have to be every day, maybe once a month. We want, we want a second pair of eyes to look at that. That's what we want. Yeah, I think what they've done here, Tom, is they, the problem is when you have the same person with uh, ability to change things in the system be the same person that collects the money and puts it in the bank. That's where the problem becomes. So they, they, they segregated those two duties. So that's the main thing you want to That's make. the main issue that's been. All right. Thank you all very much. It's a pleasure. We're going to take a little drive around town. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Yeah. I was just in Kansas City. It takes longer to walk around there. <laughs> you know, this, this uh, our auditor, I mean, th thank you, you know, I think I'm speaking for all of you. Thank you for doing what you've done. Thank, thank you for being here. This guy has a reputation, and you know, you can take that any way you want to, but he has been all over the world, and he has been a troubleshooter in really high places. Sometimes nobody in the world knew he was there, but he did. And some of the stuff that he's done, if you knew what it was, you would be astounded. I think his reference is that uh, under <laughs> President Bush, I did work on uh, law enforcement activity in Afghanistan. That's what he's referring to. Awesome. Yeah. Awesome. <laughs> yeah. And he's right, most of that he hadn't thought about. But, <laughs> <laughs> but I came back here after working there, and I'm, I'm based in Missouri, I'm born and raised in Missouri. But I was asked to do that law enforcement work in Afghanistan, came back here, and then that's when people convinced me to run for office, and that's how I got into politics. Thank you, thank you. Thanks. Good night, everybody. Bye.